Very good afternoon to everyone. Alhamdulillah, we are able to gather today virtually yeah, and in this afternoon to commemorate this eventful and meaningful session for TechSoup Malaysia together with Community Tiga. My name is Nora Aziza. I'll be your host today alongside with my founder, Jay Zou. So today is actually a very meaningful session for all of us because we do have with us not just the host, but we do have our esteemed partners. And none other than you can see from the uh, screen, uh, if you are on your gallery mode, you should be able to see all of us. Yeah, gallery mode should be able to see all of us. We've got uh, Chik Hazina from Human Cap, and we also have Chik Razia Azura from Akrab Resources. And not forgetting our handsome boy, uh, Chik, <laughs> look at the smile. All right, what we're going to do today is basically we are going to share with all of you what we have for year 2023. And with our esteemed partners, what we intend to share with all of you and how can we benefit each other. And most importantly is how we can benefit the society at large, inshallah. So without further delay, we will start off with our representative from TechSoup Connect himself, Mr. Elijah. He can't be here because he needs his beauty sleep. So what's going to happen is that we're going to watch his pre-recorded welcoming speech to all of us. So over to you, Fidel. I'll introduce the launch event of TechSoup Connect Malaysia. This group is going to bring together that was, I think, on mute. section of nonprofits, technology, and civil society. And together, we're going to talk about how we can use technology to do more good. Your hosts today are the organizers of this chapter, Firdas and Aziza, who are going to lead you through a series of events to help you learn to use technology more effectively. I'm confident that these events will give you the connections and skills you need to succeed. I want to open today with an introduction to TechSoup and the TechSoup Connect program. So TechSoup's mission is to build a dynamic bridge that leverages technology to enable connection and innovative solutions for a more equitable planet. And that's really why we're here today, to connect the people who are passionate about technology and the nonprofit sector so we can do more good. So what in TechSoup? It's a registered nonprofit and part of a global network. Our goal is to support nonprofits as they work with technology to build a more equitable planet. We host a catalog of affordable technology products from major technology brands like Microsoft, Intuit, Adobe, and more. And we offer services to help nonprofits select and install that software. We also create content courses and trainings to support you with your technology adoption. Text exists to serve the smallest nonprofits who otherwise couldn't afford to use technology effectively. As you can see, the vast majority of the organizations we serve have budgets of under $50,000. So text practically is a way for you to get access to discounted and donated hardware, software, and services. And we do that by partnering with local organizations who can represent TechSoup in each country. So in Malaysia, we are represented regionally by TechSoup Asia Pacific, and our local Malaysia partner is Yaya San. So these are the kinds of software that you can get in the TechSoup catalog. As you can see, there's a lot of software available for free or at a steep discount from partners like Microsoft, Adobe, Google, DocuSign, and Zoom. But what does TechSoup really do? Let me give you an overview of our technology marketplace concept. So this is what it used to be like if you wanted to get discounted software from a company. You needed to have a direct relationship with someone at one of those companies who could then slide you a license or offer you a special deal. But there was no way to scale that because you, if you didn't know someone at one of these organizations, they didn't have a way to know that you were a valid nonprofit and they didn't know if they'd already given to you in that year. And so there was this big gap where companies wanted to offer software to nonprofits, but they couldn't do it in a way that didn't take over their work and create a lot of busy work. So this is where TechSoup stepped in. What we do 
is we ask you to create a validation proving that you're a nonprofit as, and recognized in your country. Once you've done that, you can use that exact same validation for any of the partners in our catalog, which means it's the dream for fundraising. Imagine if you wrote a grant application once, and then you could cut and paste the exact same grant application to the next company and the next company, and you wouldn't have to modify your applications at all. That's what we do at TechSoup. We make it very easy for these companies to give software, and we make it very easy for you as a nonprofit to prove your status and find offers available to you. So to get started with the TechSoup Technology Marketplace, it's quite simple. You go to TechSoup.global, which in your case will then redirect you to the TechSoup Malaysia website. And then from there, you're going to create your free account. And if you're a nonprofit, charity, church, or library, you're probably eligible. The registration is completely free. And to complete your registration, all you need to have is a copy of the verification you got from the government proving your data, as well as a recent budget document. And that can be anything from, say, a recent grant application you did for another organization, or it could be using the budget you put together in your most recent annual report. Each of our donor partners has slightly different eligibility. Some will limit who they offer software to based on your budget size or your organization focus area. But generally, most offers are available to most organizations. And registration qualification usually takes about two weeks. So if you're in a hurry, best start to do your application now. Here's what the TechSoup Malaysia website looks like. When you come into the page, you can see the top offers are here at the top of the page from our partners. But if you want to take a look at the complete list, you'll just go down to the drop down. And from here, you can see the full list of all the partners offering donated and discounted offers. So you'll see everything from Adobe Express, which will offer 10 free licenses to nonprofits to something like Asana, which is great for project management, down to Google for nonprofits, which of course is a program you're likely familiar with. And also things like Zoom, the tool I've been using to record this session today, or something like Slack, which will give you 250 free pro licenses. Once you're ready to apply to TechSoup, you just go and click here in the top right, and you begin to start filling out the form. As you can see, it's got some help to guide you through each section to make sure you have the right information available and you begin the process here. We obviously have other resources to help you use technology. There are webinars, blog posts, articles, all of those can be found at TechSoup.org and at the TechSoup Malaysia website. And the part of TechSoup that I love the most is the TechSoup Connect program. That's where you can go and find a local event in your own country, in your own language, in your own time zone that offers case studies and examples of how nonprofits from your own community are using technology. And you can find all of those events at events.techsoup.org. But I don't need to tell you that because you're already here. So with that, I'm going to pass you back to your host today. Thank you so much, Firdas and Aziza, for creating this new TechSoup Connect chapter in Malaysia. Alhamdulillah. So we have heard from the man himself in Malaysia. So let's now hear from the man locally, uh, the person who initiated the move, actually, uh, Chief Zufidaus. In fact, I was the one who asked him about it and suddenly we became, <laughs> wanted to do it together because I find it very interesting. So let's hear from him. What is this vision of our TechSoup charity? Over to you, Fridaos. Thank you so much, Aziza. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, great. First of all, I, I just want to thank Aziza for willing to be part of it. Like she said, initially, I think this is something that I started uh, on my own based on our, my personal initiative, but Allah has a better plan. She sent, always sends someone to actually help you 
when you are doing something good. So in my case, I'm really glad that Aziza came on board. Uh, volunteering itself, we part of this uh, initiative. Alhamdulillah. I just want to share with you how I started off with Community Tigo, which is a very new organization that I registered back in in October to be specific this year. I've been working with non-profit organizations for more than 10 years now. I think some of you might know, right? Uh, in various organizations. And one of the things that I find lacking in, in the sector, especially for the employees who work in the sector, is the lack of uh, funding, the lack of resources uh, for the organizations to basically send their staff, their employees to actually obtain something, to capacity build themselves, to upgrade themselves, to upskill themselves, especially if that is pertinent for whatever work they are doing, right? Because NGO, they have, every NGO have a unique approach to society, to community. So each of the quite a different set of skills for them to deliver the work meaningfully. Let's think about this, right? Even in the normal situation, this is already an issue. And then if you remember when COVID-19 hit us back in 2019, since 2019, it's even more, it gets worse. From, from not having any, or I would say we always, NGO always put capacity building at, on the back burner due to resources. And then after the COVID hits, it gets even more critical. They don't even have funds to sustain themselves, let alone to actually send them staff, their staff to or their employees to training or any, any sort of capacity building program. So realizing this, I, I we decided to, to actually establish community trigger with the aim to basically provide platform which is accessible, which is low cost or no cost at all, uh, for them to actually come and gain whatever or as as much as as, as uh, new knowledge or new skills possible. Uh, in order for them to, to be equipped with the necessary skills to help them work uh, in, in their work. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what Competigate is. We are actually registered as a, uh, a social business, but at the moment, we don't have any clear business model yet. We don't look at making uh, any profits at the moment, so uh, all our services uh, are now full now. Okay. And I just want to go straight to our offerings. So basically, there are two main things. I mentioned earlier on about capacity building. So this is something that we are focusing at the moment. And Alhamdulillah, I think our, we, we started very well with this partnership with TechSoup Connect uh, USA. So we are so happy with this partnership. So this partnership provides us with a great platform, great network, great support, which will take us, I think, months. TechSoup, I think it's months basically launch, right? But with TechSoup, having all the support, have, have all this platform, we managed to actually launch this today. I think in a matter of, I think, less than uh, two months or so. So it's really a helpful uh, partnership. And this is something that we would like to model as well. And we believe that, especially in social sector, you can't work alone. You cannot, right? So it's always better. It's always better to actually uh, work with others, partner with others, share the same value, that share the same drive uh, in order for you to empathize. Find the impact. So that's, I hope with this partnership, I hope at least what we can show the example, the other NGOs, uh, that this is something, a good model that you can really get uh, on your own and do it uh, by yourself as well with others. Capacity building is one thing. So with this partnership with TechSoup Net, next year we will be, we will start delivering our monthly events. And that's the reason why we have uh, our beloved, our respected partners today from the companies that I'll be introducing later on. So they'll be sharing, they'll be conducting different uh, sharing sessions throughout the year, inshallah, covering different things which I'll be uh, touching on after this. And secondly, we also offer consulting services. For example, recently or rather last week, I had one NGO approach me. So we had a session. It's a new NGO. So they approached us. They wanted to find out how it's, it's, it's a new NGO. So they just wanted to make sure that they are on the right track in terms of you know, establishing the strategy, finding out their issues and, and on fundraising, how they can be better in fundraising. So we have started doing that, Alhamdulillah, and we have started to actually receive other sorting requests as well in this, this uh, manner. So now going back to our plan for 2023, like I mentioned earlier on. So in 2023, we have actually select five themes that we are going to focus on. And for us, these are very important themes. Number one, because some of the themes, even though NGOs probably have started doing this, even without realizing it, but I think it's very, I think this, some of these themes at least are very not so common in the sector. First, I think we talk about designing strategy. Even I think every time we talk about strategy, right? I think for most people, they would think about, okay, you know, 
300 pages of document. It started to get very, very dry, very scary to a certain extent. And then that, that caused them to, to get away from thinking about even designing the strategy. I think, but I think strategy is very important, especially when you are in a leadership position. How can you drive that organization without a strategy? How can you actually take your employees to, to, to have a clear vision, to, to deliver whatever they are doing with the tasks, right? If you don't have a clear strategy. So in order to do that in designing strategy is very important. There are a lot of tools out there. I think our judge will be sharing with you some of them. So it's just a matter of choosing the right tool in order for you to come out uh, with a great practical and more user-friendly approachable strategy uh, for your employees as well as your stakeholders. Secondly, change management. Face it. I think NGOs, what we do is actually we are, we are changing people. We are changing the community. We are changing the issues from bad to better, right? So that's actually what we do. But if I ask you, have you heard of change management before? Like a theory of change management? I don't think like a lot of us know, right? Especially in the NGO sector. In corporate, yes. But in NGO sector, I think this is still, still lacking. So I guess this is a very good opportunity for us to actually introduce different tools, different approaches, different best practices in change management that can be applied easily by the NGOs that can that it will help them to improve their work in the community. And branding. The third one is branding. This is, I don't think people can argue how important branding is. And not just for commercial, but nowadays it's for NGOs as well. Especially when we talk about how scarce the funding now nowadays, people or POs are literally fighting for very limited resources of funding. I think branding is actually the where NGOs can actually look into and improve themselves in order for them to actually market what they do. People uh, to make people aware about the impact that they are bringing up to the community. So branding is a very important tool for them to actually use and actually spread the work that they are doing. So with this, we will have the visual lab in the house that will be sharing with us on, on branding for the rest of the year, inshallah. Sorry, or change management. Our partner for this is Human Cap, presented by Hazrina today. And also for designing strategy, our, our partner for this is currently Sustainable, represented by Raja Azura. I'm sorry. But... Yeah. Okay. So the next theme is fundraising. So fundraising, I guess it goes without saying, it's a, it's a crux of NGO. Right. But I think now, and in most cases, NGOs, especially the small ones, are relying too much on public funding. I think fundraising is a very big area where we, there are a lot of actually, uh, rep, not rep, streams that we can go for fundraising. I think always people rely on the generic fund, the generic approach, the traditional approach of fundraising, while there are a lot of other means actually to raise funds through different, different platforms and different funders. So this is an area that we hope to discover. To, to explore further with our future partner, which we have yet to do. So if you have anyone or any one of you actually expert in fundraising who are listening now, so please reach out to us because we are still looking for, for the partners. We have few potential partners we have approached, but if you have any anything to share with us, just that is. And finally, knowledge management. So knowledge management also, just like change management, is a new area as well, especially for the NGO. I think if you ask me, NGO, we don't have we don't keep assets, but I think if you were to actually point out one asset that we have been sitting on, like a lot of them, it's actually knowledge for NGOs. It's like the, the main important asset for most NGOs, for, especially for NGOs who have been operating for five to 10 years. We're sitting on a pile of knowledge, pile of assets. They don't even know that path, right? This due to lack of knowledge management. So the, the idea of knowledge management is really is about, um, Cultivating the, oh, sorry, capturing the knowledge that they have gathered from the years of experience they have collected working with the community and utilize this knowledge in a way that they can make a better decision, make a better decision, or even use it to actually raise funds or even creating a better, more many, a meaningful uh, programs to the society with this knowledge. Without proper knowledge management practice in that organization, you won't be able to actually capture or recall back the knowledge or assess the knowledge easily or more systematically due to lack of, you, you can, but maybe it takes time, right? If you have, imagine having a proper system, a very systematic way, a uh, very uh, dedicated and user-friendly way uh, of knowledge management approach, this will be very useful for them, for the, for the NGOs to better utilize the knowledge for their decision making. So also just like fundraising, we are still looking for knowledge management. There are not many practitioners in knowledge management, I have to admit. Uh, so we have knowledge management institutes 
which will be approaching very soon. But if you are the practitioner of knowledge management, if you, your company or your institutions are working within this knowledge management area, we are happy to share with, to talk to you. Maybe we can collaborate to deliver the content for 2023. All in all, that's all that we are offering this year. I look forward to be listening to our partners moving forward. So again, we have Hazina from Human Cat will be touching on change management. We have Raja Azura uh, from Craft Resources will be talking about uh, designing strategy. And we have brother uh, Kalis from Visual Lab will be talking about branding, inshallah. So with that, I'm going to pass uh, over to Hazina. Hazina will be introducing Human Cat and what they do and then straight on. Uh, to talk about change management and what uh, we can look forward to in 2023. So over to you, Azina. Thank you very much. Thank you, Firdaus. I think I'm back in. Good afternoon. I hope everybody's uh, having a really good weekend. I'll share my screen in a second. I hope you guys can see my screen clearly. All right, great. Today, what I'll be sharing with you is a little bit about human cap, a little bit about change management and some of the technologies that we are using to manage change. But just let me introduce myself. So I am Hazlina. I'm currently the Chief Operating Officer of Human Cap. And who is Human Cap? Human Cap is a management consulting company, and we've been around for about 15 years, serving the various industries in Malaysia. And we have also created some traction to regional services all the way up to China, some uh, touching even Australia, Singapore, Vietnam, and Thailand. Our main service is in change management. That's our core. The other services that we do also provide is in human capital consulting, strategy consulting, also in talent management and leadership development. So as you can see, change management being one of the core services that we offer, I feel that this is something that's probably a bit more appropriate for us to share with the NGOs out there on how some of the tools out there that are available that can be leveraged to manage the change that you are going through. Okay. Human cap in general, we have, we've been in a lot of places in various industries from oil and gas to the government agencies in finance, also in various other areas, such as semiconductors and also even leisure types of organizations. So when we talk about change management, usually there is, I like to say this, there's a science and this art of it. So the science of it is something that we can put together. And this is something that Human Cat has developed in-house through the years of experience that we have delivered change management projects and it has consists of four phases which also includes change sustainability because as sometimes when you um, affect change it can die off or people might revert to the old way of doing things and we don't want them, that to happen we have a very structured approach into how we manage the change and if you want to we, we can have a longer conversation later once in the programs that we are going to be conducting next year so just to give you a flavor of what's going to, you're going to get out of the sessions that we'll be doing in terms of the sharing of knowledge. So it's about change and the tools that you can leverage in order for you to get the science part at least of change should be sorted out. Okay. So there are some PMI, this is the Project Management Institute. There are a few things that have been identified as reasons why change implementations fail. Some of it about improperly defined objectives, like this is unclear or there's a lack of clarity. And then post that, there's lack of the effective communication that gets out there. And people are also in a, unable to cope with technology because it's moving so fast and it's changing almost on a daily basis. There's also the issue of unfamiliarity of scope and poor project management skills. So. Whatever change that you implement, the science part does include the project management requirement. And that's why one of the things that I would like to share with you in the next coming session is about reimagining stakeholder and project management. So this is about, as NGOs, I'm sure you have various stakeholders that need to manage various groups, some a bit more resistant than others, some a bit more difficult than others. 
some are easier and influences for you. So how do you manage this? I'm going to introduce you a little bit of how we have been using Trendo in managing some of our projects and also maybe have a, a reimagining of how you use a project management tool to manage your stakeholders. So this is something that probably we can help you with and share some knowledge there. The other area that we hopefully be able to help you is also or share our knowledge team is mainly on reimagining communications. So one of the key things that is required in change is of course communications. How do you make it effective? So we're going to touch a little bit on Canva and how you manage your communications, but we'll also be sharing some of the tools in terms of how you organize and plan your communications so that it is not something that is as and when needed. It's actually strategically put together so that it becomes more effective and people are able to get your messaging better and clearer. Okay, so these are two of the areas that I'm thinking that we could be, we will be able to share in terms of our knowledge in helping you guys uh, and helping you guys help the communities and the issues that you are trying to propagate. Okay, so I would like to see you at the next session. I look forward to it. Thank you. And my, our next speaker is going to be Raja Azira from Accra. Go ahead, Raja. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody is doing great today. It's a Saturday. And thank you for being here with us to listen to what we can offer you. Let me try. Oh, I can share. Not sure why I can share the slide. You want me to share? What did you get? I'm Azra from Market Resources. Uh, thank you for next slide. I think thank you for making us part of this collaboration. Very happy to be here. We look forward to see how exactly you want to make a difference through this collaboration. Next slide. Okay, a bit about myself. You can call me Azura. If, we are, if, we are, if I were to be with a student or scholars, they call me. I've been a corporate leader, to nation builder, uh, to social entrepreneur, and also uh, a volunteer. I always uh, been seen or people call me a leader at the heart. I've uh, been advising in many ways. Now I'm doing part-time work, doing mentoring, uh, been speaking all around. I'm also known as motivational singer. Maybe <laughs> in session I can sing a bit or so to the participants as well. Currently, I'm a social entrepreneur, been a nation builder before. Mother, I don't have my own kids, but I have, I have thousands of kids that have been grown through Yayasan Penuraju and also currently I'm doing some work with Samdabi, Yayasan Samdabi. Uh, so they are my kids, so more than 25,000 kids altogether. A wife, a caretaker, my mom is unwell now. So I, I've decided to part-time to make sure that I'll be able to also serve my mom. Social worker, been doing lots of uh, social work around. Volunteer and also a fighter. A fighter is maybe we can reserve that story in a later session because we only have 10 minutes. Okay, next slide. Okay, at Rock Resources, uh, I have a partner, is that to Alia. Maybe next slide as well. A bit about our resources, we are very new, co founded in 2020 by that to Alia and myself. We are really committed to be a better future, very small currently. And we are here to help nurturing and developing lives. Our mission is always trying to see whatever that we, in whatever that we do, we want to ensure that we are creating social impact. So our philosophy will always be about connecting, sharing, learning, and getting others to grow. And the four areas that we are covering under our resources, one is on capacity building. We are also doing community services. A few SDGs that we are covering and also NGO management and consulting. And it's a lot of things here. Maybe we can just keep this is some of the things that we are currently doing. Uh, example, uh, digital citizenship, leadership book champs, uh, graduate uh, career coaching and mentoring as well. Next slide. Sorry, what is digital citizenship? This one is we, we wanted as much as uh, we, uh, we can to get the youth to understand what is important on digital. So now the, the, the grammar name is digital citizenship. Lah. So they will be able to understand what are the core um, digital elements that they need for, to have with them so that they will be able to be successful uh, in life and also in career. Lah. Yeah. Next one is on community services. So we do counseling, mental health, family wellness, financial digital literacy, or yeah, fundraising. Or, maybe I, I can try ask my partner whether 
she can help cover on fundraising if you can't get another button to come on board. Okay. Uh, motivation and talks, mentoring programs and all. Okay, next one. Slide um, so on SDG, we currently cover four SDGs. And also NGO management, if there's any startup, HR services, finance and tax, sustainable reporting and all. The next slide is more on some of the programs that we have conducted. We have our collaboration with Yes and some Dabi currently. So we are doing, we handle about 600 over scholars currently, doing leadership talk series, a mentoring session. Next slide. Some of the workshops that we actually uh, manage for them. Mindset and spiritual resilience workshop, personal branding, mental health, awareness, uh, emotional intelligence. And the next one will be more on some of our engagement. Uh, next slide is more on some of the things that we do for the youth. We have mental health counseling that we are currently running together with the ISN How uh, Health on the World. And I personally have uh, a clinic called Omis Clinic. So Omis, what it does is, Whenever any youth have problems, they need to talk to someone, just call me and I'll be there. And I'll be talking to them and then trying to assess whether it's a normal problem or it's a mental health issue that they need further counselling and we'll then get them to be counselled by licensed counsellors. Next slide. Uh, this one is some of the training engagement and engagement that we, are, we, we have done as well uh, throughout the year. Um, and next slide. Uh, these are some of the other services. Uh, we've been doing lots of, lot of talks and also engagement with quite numbers of uh, companies like Tabuaj, Equinas and all as well. Now. In this slide, we didn't have the component of strategic planning, but I have to actually bring back the slide, but I can't actually show it because it's not in the one that I have. So what I plan to actually do when it comes to deep planning, there are four areas that I would like to cover. What is actually on strategic planning and also uh, what is strategic planning for people to understand what exactly is strategic planning and why is it very important? Because moreover, sometimes we don't really look at strategic planning as important. We start doing activities without thinking about the end game. So this is where understanding why it's very important is crucial. The second part is actually understanding the principle and also the tools that we can use for strategic planning. So there are, there are many kind of tools that, that can be used. We have visioning, pastel, SWOT, scorecard, portfolio, analysis, and many more. And being an NGO, you don't want to really do something like what corporate is doing because you'll find it very overwhelming. Oh, there's so many things that you have to do. There, there are lots of things that you have to cover. But my plan is actually to provide my own experience. I've done some strategic planning at corporate level and also when I wasn't with the foundation, even for a few foundations recently that I helped out in terms of coming up with the strategic planning. So we don't have to do too much in terms of looking at two, but how do we want to make it effective by using certain important tools? Okay, the third one is about the stages of strategic planning. How do you want to make it more structured in terms of doing it on, on stages so that you, you won't feel that it's too much to do. Lah. Usually we'll start with analysis of the current state and then we look at what are the states that we want to be, be in. And then how do we define and determine the strategic and goals that we want to actually achieve. And then come to the tactical level where we identify the activities that we want to do in team end. And usually what have happened when we look at strategy and we directly look at implementation, there will always be gaps. So how do we want to turn strategy to tactical plan? And then how do we want to? Operationalize it. That's very important because people always miss out the tactical yeah, part. Though. So that's something that I would like to share as well. And lastly, because sometimes when you do strategic planning and this is the document that you want to use to convince the people out there to come and maybe work with you, collaborate with you, how do you then come up with a proper strategic plan that would be able to convince your investor or the, the funder out there to come and work with you? So that is what I have uh, in mind in terms of sharing during the planning session. It's all about that will be uh, conducted at the this collaborative session. All right. So that's all from me. Next speaker will be Kalis from Visual Lab. Over to you, Kalis. Hi. Thank you, Puan Azura, for that very interesting session just now. So let me share my screen. Okay. So... Can everyone confirm that you see my screen? Okay. 
All right. Yep. So do you see my screen now? Yes, Kalis. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Kalis. I'm, I, I am from Vizio Lab. So we are technically a creative media agency where we help corporates and also big brands to do brand identity, uh, video production, a uh, website, and also uh, UI UX. So we are a combination of uh, two subsidiaries, um, which is Visio Asia, named uh, for Visual Tech, and also Creative Media by Trendlet Media. And we also have our uh, own event and studio space at the Lot KL. So what do we do actually? So this is what our capabilities now. We have creative visuals, type visuals, and also academy. In creative visuals, we do content production for video, uh, 2D, 3D, and motion graphics, cinematic drones, photography, and M MCP. For branding, we are doing brand development and also rebranding, collaterals, print and packaging, editorial, uh, editorials, and also marketing contents. Under type visual, we do some website UI UX. And we also have new media 360 virtual tour and also long-term lifetime labs. And we have just started our own academy in terms of developing new youth talents in creative tree. So this is me and my team. We are currently located in Sentul and also in Cyberjaya. So this is our respected and clients that we have delivered to. We have service from the private companies, CIS, GAC, also the government sector, doing all sorts of creative works for them. Okay, so this is our showreel. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time to showreel. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith to see into the future. Envision the possibilities and embracing the change. To see further. We must look forward, break limits to expand possibilities, break barriers to push the envelope. We believe vision and value are connected. With great power comes greater possibility. We view the world through the wide prism of innovations across industries, brands, systems, and people. In the new digital world, this is what we do. We craft our told stories to create movement, to inspire. We capture the vision of tomorrow for organizations, people, and the planet. We amplify art with technology. We build excitement. We create extraordinary experiences. We're architects that develop visuals that influences all around the world. It's an end. We help lines chain before the curve. We go above and beyond. We help people harness the power of visuals who sees the future. Thanks to a team that defies expectations. This your map. Visuals with vision. Yeah, so that is our show reel that we have just put in, I think, last to three months ago. It is a compilation of our work for our previous clients. So in terms of our methodology, how do we do it? We have this, uh, what we call five methodology on how we produce contents. So the first one would be the discovery phase. This is where you discuss your goals, determine your success metrics, identify problems, and also define your target audience. Secondly is where you do content strategy, you begin designing the storyline, the visual direction and whatnot. And the third thing, the third phase will be production, bring it to life. Um, this is where we do shootings, we do editings and whatnot. So for post-production, the fourth phase will be the, where we select, compose and edit all materials into one output to meet the objective that we have set in the uh, discovery phase. And lastly is a review and refine. So this is our thoughts together, uh, seeing the final output. So in terms of what do we offer for this tech to connect and also for our audience during 2023, we are offering four, I think, components that is quite, um, uh, essential. One is, um, branding identity. This is where you decide what is your organization want to accomplish. 
identify again or re rediscover your target audience, define the term of success in terms of your campaign, and finally decide on how you want to make your organization known to the people. On the second module will be video production, where we focus on production process flow, mobile videography, producing video for the right cause, producing the right campaign for your audience, and also hitting the soft spot of your target audience. And we also do on the third module, the pitch deck, where we structure your representation, infuse brand identity to your deck, and communicate effectively in a creative way. And finally, is graphics. So impactful communication, creative process flow, formatting and render. I think from our end, we have been doing this uh, kind of exercise with the corporate companies, government agencies and whatnot. And this is, I think, how we can contribute back to helping the NGOs in to establish the organization better. All right. So this is just some example on branding direction that have been doing before where when Coke decided to change their logo, when Pepsi decided to change their logo. So I think later on in 2023, when we discuss our module, we can also discuss some case studies or what is the right way forward for yours. And then whether we preserve or whether we change the identity and whatnot. And also, this is just some example of what we do previously with Sapura Group, Sapura Aerospace, and also NICE. This is some of presentation that, that we help to uh, redesign and reorganize to ensure that um, the, 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 the flow was right, the, uh, uh, the design was um, uh, impactful and whatnot. All right. Okay. So this is just some example of posters design that we have created. This is actually a newspaper advertisement. And this is some media social posters that we've created also for our clients based on their input and based on their objective. So what we will explore, um, that is part of four things that we will explore, brand identity, video production, pitch deck, and graphics. So we need to know what is good and what is bad practices, how we influence people with branding and how to better establish your brand. And lastly, how to do and how to give an impactful message to the community. Yeah, so I look forward to work with you guys. Let's play together. And that's all from me. Over back to the moderator. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Khalis. Thank you to everyone. In fact, I personally am so excited and looking forward for year 2023 with all the talents that we have. We've got, I was talking about change management. So I was like looking at it. Yeah, for it is not just about having had the change. It's doing the right things before the change. So to manage change is one thing. And after that, you've got to go into a mode where you need to do a little bit of strategic thinking. And that's where I think I has mentioned it clearly that you need to know what is the tactical between what you want and the end in mind, right? So there is something that you need to have. And last but not least, to sum it up, you've got to bring it forward and to do it forward. I think you've got to have the good, uh, or I would say acceptable or missable brand identity by Kali. So I was like, um, okay, we've got a combination of talents. We've got the young ones. We've got Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z. So you name it, we have it. So now I would like to invite the others. We've got Inchek Shah Shahria and Saif as well as Yusuf. Uh, do you guys have any questions for our talents, for our expertise here? We, maybe you need to have some clarification. You need to know further. What else do they have in mind? What else can will they be sharing? It is open. So we are open for questions to everyone. You can unmute yourself, introduce, and just ask questions. Direct the questions to the person that you would like to ask. Yes. Go ahead, Shai. Yeah. Hi. Thank you, Dr. Noor. Um, so I'm not in Malaysia. I'm based in Bangladesh, actually. And I had told some authorities and invited me. And I, it, it seemed quite interesting because it takes so technology and things. And I just have a general interest. And having known Fedos for some time, I have seen him sharing things on LinkedIn. So was curious and that's what made me join. So it was quite nice uh, to see the presentation. I missed part of it for the prayer break. But other than that, it looked exciting. I saw the beginning and like how helping the not-for-profit and organization. 
And yeah, I would, I'd like to explore more in future, maybe how we can benefit from that as well. I don't know if they have a chapter in Bangladesh, if not, maybe open one or maybe benefit from you guys. We can explore that. And, and the presentation from Video Lab was quite intriguing as well. I'm interested in content creation and all that. So yeah, I think just as a member of the public, you can say, found it useful and intrigued or piqued my interest even further. So look forward to being in touch, if that's okay, despite not being in Malaysia. So You are always welcome, you. Jerry. Thank you very much for supporting us as well, for being here today. Yeah, uh, we look forward. We definitely capture your email then, since you are in the Zoom. Yeah, you look forward for our communication to you as well on the future events, uh, webinars that we will have. Okay, so now I'm open to even Saif or Yusuf. Do you guys have any questions to ask the uh, experts here today? Before that, I just want to, yeah. sorry, go ahead yourself. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank Sharia Yusuf and Sahib for joining us today. Uh, Sharia is actually my connection uh, from the work I do uh, in that organization. We met a lot of times. I'm not sure whether we have met face-to-face, -face, but uh, definitely online uh, through few engagements. I just want to let everyone know that this session is recorded, even though we don't have that many setups today, but this session, this video will be, is recorded, it's being recorded and will be shared with uh, or on our platforms going forward. And I really appreciate if you can share the contest moving forward. I think you have heard uh, what our partners have shared earlier on. I think by now, I personally have been very excited for 2023. To be honest, I did not expect to listen to that kind of content our speakers was, was sharing earlier on. So it shows that they have actually really put in like a serious thought about this, this partnership, the session they have been conducting. Uh, and they have come up with this brilliant idea, brilliant insight, brilliant perspective on how to bring their experience in mostly corporate world to the NGO world, which I find is very, very refreshing, very meaningful as well. I guess this is my, my closing remark from, uh, on behalf of Petsu Malaysia and, and the community figure. So I, again, I would like to thank everyone uh, who participated here today, uh, especially our partners. Uh, and we look forward to 2023, inshallah. So I'm not sure whether the rest of you have anything else to say in close this. Any Rajas, your Aziza? All right, good. Any words of before we end the day, any kind of advice, any kind of reminder that you want to share with the rest? Maybe about two or three sentences. Hi, hello, hello. Hi. Um, hi, hi, Saif. Yes, you have a question? Yeah, I'm seeing just because I'm on listen to all the ideas from yes. all the partners from Shimon mm -hmm. Care from Arka, from Eurizio. It's just that my question is, will be like, because, you know, it's going to be in 2023, right? So how are you guys going to operationalize it? Like, do you guys going to organize an event for each of the panel? Or what was the call for this one? Okay, good question. Pridos, would you like to answer? Sure. Yeah. So previously, Tetsu was actually operating on both uh, games. Number one is offline sessions. Before the COVID, I think most of the events are conducted uh, face-to-face. Secondly, of course, after, after COVID, everyone is actually on, on online uh, sessions, right? But I've heard, however, listening to the, I think the content uh, that was put forward by our partners, I think especially Kylie's, I think I see some possibilities, potential of actually conducting the training offline. We are open to that, right? Especially when the content involves a lot of hands-on, a lot of practicing, yeah, that will be more meaningful for the participants to, to appreciate the, the content of the training. So. I think we are open to that. I hope Kalis is open to that as well. But it's something uh, that we can discuss further. Yeah. Yeah, possible. Yeah. You yeah. can also come to our studio <laughs> so that we can do hands-on uh, activity on that. Yeah, definitely. But most of the time, uh, so I have to answer your question, the session will be online and recorded so that we can share uh, the content with uh, the rest of the world after the, the session. Yeah. Not denying the possibility of, of having it offline as well. Uh, probably last question from me, like just so uh, this is sure. only for yeah. on NGO, right? So uh, on the on the next event or training that will be held in twenty twenty three, so everyone is welcoming to uh, participate, or it's only like from organizing an NGO point of view only. Definitely everyone, yeah. everyone. Everyone. Uh, this here, is an yeah. open source, yeah, yeah. So yeah. everyone can have access to their to the content. Yep. Um. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Saif. That's a very good question. Actually, it opens up. Yeah, it's maybe some of us may be thinking, is this just is, is this only meant for NGOs? No, actually, it is not. As we said earlier, it is meant for everyone as long as it is benefit, benefiting the society. And there is no limits to knowledge sharing and there's no limits to learning, actually. So all of us, regardless of our age, 
or where we are, our status, regardless of all that, we still need to learn and knowledge is the best asset that we can ever have. So this is the platform actually. So thank you so much, Saif. So maybe, Encik Yusuf, just now you actually unmute for a short while, and then you muted you yourself Sharia? again. Sharia uh, Sh Sh yeah, Sharia, yes, my dear. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, yeah. Josiah. We haven't met the face to face, but it seems like we have. That's how many times we probably got in touch. Just wanted to ask one thing for Khalid from Vizio Lab. Is can I get in touch in terms of content production and things? And if yes, how do I do that? Just to talk about content production generally for different areas. Uh, I will yeah. definitely can connect you both. Yeah, sorry, Khalid. Yep. Okay, can I will uh, try to share Khalid's contact? Yeah. Go ahead, Khalid. Sorry. Yep, thank you for that. That was, yep. Uh, Sharia, you can always contact me. I'll pass my number to to give it to you. Uh, or I also chat you in the chat box. Huh? Yeah, thank you. Very well. So we are get we are getting connected, <laughs> not just in Malaysia now. Good. Last call. So do you have anything to ask? Because just now you unmute yourself. So maybe I do not want to leave the session with an uh, answered question. <laughs> so maybe you can voice out your question. So last one, perhaps. No, to yourself. No, no question. No question, yeah? Okay, great. If there is no question, just one night, I would like to remind all of you, we will be starting in the month of January itself. So look out for our calendar. We will be keeping in touch with all of you via the social media, our LinkedIn account, even through our emails then, inshallah. And we really appreciate your support. Thank you very much to our esteemed partners, uh, Hazina from Human Care. Very, I like the way you put the change management. And I thank you very much for the strategic uh, thinking, the way you put it. With, with, even without the slides, I can grasp the, the, the idea itself. And Khalis, young chap. So it's something that we all look forward to because this is what we are lacking of, to tell you the truth. Right? So it's a combination of all. And not forgetting our supporters, uh, Shahria, thank you from Bangladesh. We we'll look forward to seeing you in January. Yeah, virtually. Saif and Yusuf. Okay, and maybe Fridaus, last final words from you. What do you have for all of us? Yeah, keep on supporting us, of course. And do join, do share this initiative. This is very new. This is, we are among the first one in Southeast Asia, Urban Asia, to actually establish this chapter on, on behalf of TechSoup. So support us, do continue to follow our activities on LinkedIn. We, are, we have LinkedIn uh, Facebook page. The name is Community Digger. Uh, so please follow us. Uh, and reach out to us if you have any ideas, if you have any suggestions to make in terms of content that you want to hear from us in 2023 or moving forward. We're always happy for partnership. We're always happy for uh, you know, collaboration, ideas, and any suggestion from you. So thank you so much again. I look forward to seeing everyone in 2023, inshallah. With that. Take care, everyone. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.